Okay, great. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to the, since this is on PAC 14, welcome you all to a second meeting of our redistricting commission. Um, it's September 8th, uh, 2021, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, first thing on our agenda for tonight is the approval of the minutes from the August 11th, 2021 meeting. And I need to ask, does anybody have any, <coughs> excuse me, additions or corrections to those minutes? Actually, I think yours is the press to talk microphone. Okay, so, um, yeah. I do have a question of clarification, and it stems from the email about um, about sitting members. And I know we're going to okay. discuss that later. Right, that's we're going to do right. that after we do the minutes. But I have further question about the other uh, instructions we were given: uh, the contiguous and reasonable compact boundaries, one minority district. Uh, <coughs> keep changes to a minimum, follow Route 50 and 13 in equal population. I'm just wondering which of these instructions are a result of state statute and which are just merely preferences of, of the council. I'm not clear on that. Um, it's actually dictated in the charter section that was emailed to everyone. Um, I can go grab that if you want and read it um, for the record if you want. Yeah, yeah, let me. I, I did. That. I did read that, but I'm still not clear as to uh, whether these all of these instructions are a matter of statute or, or county or ordinance. Other than what's actually written into the Wacomico County Charter, I'm not aware of any additional statutes, Mr. Illuminati. There's not. So can I conclude then, with the exception of equal population and contiguous boundaries, that the remainder of these instructions are, are a statement of preference rather than a, a statute or ordinance? Except for the majority minority district. I mean, the motion is to adopt the minutes. Yes. So the minutes are what happened at the last meeting. These questions can be addressed throughout the course of this discussion. Just because you adopt the minutes doesn't mean you're bound to set these forth as the goals. Okay, does that help clear that for you? Anybody else have any additions, corrections? All right, then I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from August 11th, please. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, the minutes passed. Um, now, the next thing on the list, there was a question that was raised about should we have a parliamentarian for our meetings? And just to give you all a little history, for our county council meetings, we've always relied on our legal uh, attorney to give us guidance to make sure we're doing things correctly. <laughs> um, and we've followed the Roberts Rules of Orders. So I don't know, um, Dr. Nagel, you were the one that brought that up. Yes, and uh, I would formally request that legal counsel be parliamentarian. Okay. That's, that's all. Um, Is that all right, Mr. Illuminati? That when I was on the school board. Okay. Uh, do, do I need a motion to that effect or, pardon? Yes. Yes. Yes, all right. Do we have a motion, Dr. Nagel, please? So move. Okay. A second, please. Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, legal counsel will also be our parliamentarian. So that will take care of that. Okay, Mr. Illuminati, there were some questions about district boundaries and that type of thing and current elected Board of Education members and county council members. So I'll turn this over to you next, please. Okay, so I think if we look at the screen, it'll be the best example, um, the code, the excuse me, the charter specifically says no member of the county council shall be required to vacate his office by reason of any change in the boundary lines of his council maniac district made during his term. So they hold four year terms. So if we look at the pink district, 
uh, I don't know the number, and we look at that black box that's in the blue district, uh, and I don't know what member that is, but if during the course of uh, redistricting, the black box in the blue became part of the pink, between when that became the new district lines and the second, excuse me, the first Tuesday in December in 2022, when those who were elected in November of 2022 would take office, that individual that's currently in the blue, but because of December, January, February, whenever the council acts, moves into the pink, that council member does not lose his or her seat. And so, for example, it just happens to be that this year is an election year and a redistricting year. But if last year was an election and redistricting was happening now and the next election wasn't for an additional three years, that person would continue to hold their seat for three years as long as they did not move. For their district. For that even, district. Even if they're not in it due to the new lines. Due to the new lines. So that member, if that gets redistricted, <laughs> will continue to hold that seat until the first Tuesday in December. Now, when it comes to filing for an election, they'll have to file for where they will be for the 2022 mm -hmm. to 2026 term. So the answer is you can move lines, but by virtue of moving the lines and then the council adopting the new lines, that does not deprive or uh, remove anyone from their current seat. And the same is true for the uh, Board of Education, and that's in state law, the Education Code, Section 3-13A-01B3. Right. Okay, are there any questions on that? Do, do you all want to have a discussion on it? Do you? So that does mean we could change the lines for the next election and the person could fall outside their current district. Correct. It's not just for the next election. It's for the next two elections until the next redistricting. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one election. It's until the next redistricting. But my, my question is, there are no restrictions for us about how we draw these lines and where members currently sit. No. Thank you. No. I know that's been a concern for past uh, redistricting commissions and as a general um, history, they have not chosen to redistrict somebody out of their their district. Um, but it would be up to this commission, you know, you know, you have the option if we need to move a line. Okay, any other questions on that this evening? All right. Well, and that would then mean same goes for the Board of same thing. Same thing for the right. Board of Education, yes. And that's yes. by state law. Right. right. I mean, the lines can move. The lines can move, but they hold that seat until the next election. Okay. Does everybody understand all that? Yes. All right. Um, did you have anything else you need to add, Mr. Lunani, or? No. Okay. Uh, well, the next thing on the agenda is Mr. Frank McKenzie, who has all the numbers for us. Will, um, uh, Madam Chairman, yeah. be, um, before uh, Mr. McKenzie gets started, could I ask him to clarify some of the terms uh, that he used last month uh, that when I was reviewing the minutes, I wasn't quite positive on where we were going. Okay. <laughs> like, I know what, what a block is, you know, because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I knew who the toughest kid on the block was, wasn't me. But a block is something else in your description. I don't know how precinct applies to our mission and another word parcels was in there well um the, the smallest uh, geometry that we use in our mapping world is is in this case parcels so this is you know you've got a subdivision there lies lot line all those are parcel lines in, in some cases a parcel line will fall like along a stream um, or along, you know, always on a road. Um, and in some cases, there's a corporate limit line that may follow a parcel line 
but it's not a road. So what the Census Bureau has done is they take all these different geographical physical features and non-physical features, and they start to overlay these on a map. And so when you look at the block level, you think of streets. Now you can divide up. Uh, the Census Bureau also recognizes that if, if a stream cuts a block in half, that could be two blocks. So they look, look at that as two separate areas. Um, if a corporate limit line cuts through a block, then that can also be split into two blocks. But it's all shown on here. When you, when you look at it, all these blocks are already designated. But it's not just, when you think of a block, it's not just streets. You know, it's all types of different layers that intersect each other that can cause these blocks to, to occur. Now, precincts. Um, when we start looking at how, you know, there's different layers of this, like with the uh, legislative and congressional boundaries, those things are also great boundaries on here. And they can follow, they have to follow the blocks, but they might follow things differently than what we do. So in some cases, if you, um, when we do our work, they will end up with, with a map to say it looks like that. Um, when they do the congressional map, it, it may, it's gonna slice those things up differently. And each time there's a new boundary intersect, that creates like a precinct. And those are tracked by the Board of Elections. So in some cases, there may be you know, a lot of people in a precinct. There may be no people in a precinct. Um, and there may be just a few. So if it ends up that the, you know, when we do ours, we'll be OK. But when the state legislature does theirs, we don't know what's going to happen with our boundaries. So in, in, the, in the previous uh, endeavor, there was just one area I can zoom in to about where it is. See that little nub right there? For some reason, when the um, legislature was drawing their lines, there was a little teeny block here that they grabbed and threw that into a legislative district. So all of a sudden, if, if we, we kept this line to go straight, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a few people living here, and you could figure out who they were, who they voted for, you know, just because it's such a, a small geographic area. And the, the data is kept at the precinct level as well as the block level. So in this case, the, the, the county uh, council, on, on the advice of the Board of Elections, uh, changed that line for, for going down that road. And I'll turn on the streets. So there's a road here. This is, uh, is that Rocket Walking or Quantico Road or something like that? Um, they changed their boundary in order to not make that a precinct. So I, I was just kind of alerting you that after you go through this process, there may be some adjustments that will be made, even after the county council has adopted the map. Once, once they adopt it and the legislature comes through and they do something else, the county council may have to open this back up and make an adjustment. Um, so do you think uh, my block where I live is the street that I live on or my subdivision? Could be either, right? Um, well, let's see if I can show you something here. This is a different map product. Um, See if this is going to work. This network is really slow, and if it doesn't work, we'll have to uh, get an error over there. Um, okay, well, let's look at it this way. I've got an aerial for photography.
Well, the network is misbehaving here. Well, I was trying to show you that with the air photography, you can see neighborhoods in here. And, um, you know, a subdivision like Centennial Village, you know, there's a couple hundred houses there. Um, you think of them as lots. Um, they were cut out of a parcel. And the parcel, there may be many parcels in a block. But we're not getting down to the lot level unless that lot line happens to be a corporate limit line, for instance. So we're dealing basically in the, in the lot lines we can, in the, parcel, in the block lines that are identified by the census. And that's what we, we can't split them. We have to use the entirety of a block that they've identified. I'm gonna reboot this software because it's hanging here. Sorry about this. And Frank, if I understand you correctly, those blocks are determined by natural and man-made um, and cultural features. And features, okay. Yeah. Cultural being corporate limits or something like that. So let's see if I can turn this on. Come on. There we go. So this is an area in the city of Salisbury and um, Harbor Point, I think that's what it is. Um, you know, at one time, this was one major big parcel and it was subdivided into a series of smaller lots. Um, but all these lots are all part of a block. So in this case, you can see this line here. This is going, it's the center line of a road, it looks like, and here it hits the water's edge. And then this is corporate limit line here, I believe. And a river runs through it. Yes. So it, it, a river can be a boundary. Yeah. Um, stream, if identified by the, the Census Bureau. Last year, or last census, um, they have computer models that create these blocks. And they had an error that occurred where if a circular driveway was of a certain distance, that could create a block. And if the block went you know, in the back of the house, you know, you'd have just a few people living in that block. Or if it could go in the front of the house. And we couldn't get rid of it. We had to deal with it. <clears throat> Thank you for the clarification. Um, so, you know, I, I passed out the numbers, you know, to, to Laura a few weeks ago, uh, looking at the non-adjusted numbers. And, <clears throat> excuse me, was at least doing some preliminary work, just trying to see what we might be looking at. And um, one thing we discovered is, you know, there was not much growth compared to previous uh, censuses over the years. Generally, we've been growing about 1,000 people a year for the last 60 years. So every census was about 10,000 people more from 74, 84, 94, and then it was 103, something like that. Um, so, you know, we, we're, we're looking for anomalies. You know, was there errors in the, the, the capture of the data? And we believe there, there were, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it at this point. Um, <clears throat> the city 
may have time. I don't, when, I don't know when their next election is, but um, they may have time to go back to the bureau and ask for, you know, a, a recount of certain blocks. Um, we, we wouldn't have time to do that. Uh, we noticed some areas last time. You know, there was um, areas identified where we know it's a commercial shopping center where there's no homes there, and they'd have like 34 people living there. Also, you know, a block could be the, the median strip in Route 50. They had people assigned to those blocks. So we knew their errors, but we just didn't have time to fix them. Um, in, in those cases, you know, the, the ones we discovered uh, were not in, a, in an area where it would make a difference uh, in drawing the boundaries. So we didn't have to avoid those things or working with them. <clears throat> so the, the first numbers I, I passed out, you know, um, the non-adjusted numbers, you know, you can kind of put those aside. And now we'll talk about the adjusted numbers. Now, in the chart, you know, I've provided, you know, the 2000 census with each of the districts and, you know, the total population of those different districts, the deviation. Now, the deviation is 5% above or 5% below, you know, the ideal population. The ideal population is basically one fifth of the population of Wicomico County. So you can see here, you know, they give you a number of the deviation, the percent of the deviation. So you can see uh, in 2010 census, you know, I think the largest deviation was 2.59% above for population. The other ones, they got down pretty close. And that was a major goal of them to do that. But they spent, uh, I guess, four or five meetings uh, working that out. In addition to that, um, you have to identify, you know, a minority district. In this case, the minority is classified as, as a black race. So we look at the, you know, total black race and the adjusted percentage of black of that district. So in 2010, District 1 had a 57.91% black population. And the goal is just to be above 50%. So, you know, the committee worked as hard as they could to get that up above, you know, the 50 percent um, and then let the other ones balance those out as far as total population. So you can see, you know, when we look at uh, the 2020 census, so these numbers are basically taking the existing block information that we have and looking at that with the old district boundary lines. So in District 1, uh, we have a total population of 21,206 with a deviation of 361 people. So as far as total population, we are just 1.02% above um, the ideal population. The black population was 12,229, which is 57.67% of the total. So here again, you know, we are pretty close to the same percentage that occurred in 2010 census. In District 2, uh, there were 19,814 people. It's 1,031 people below the deviation. So that gets us at 4.95%, you know, above or, or below our target. In District 3 was uh, 21,713 population, 866 people was a deviation, 4.16 deviation. Now for these, there's no race, race calculations required for 2 through 5. For District 4, 19,779, a deviation of 1,066. So this one has a... a is below 5.11%. So this was the only district that was identified as not being within the parameters of the 5% below or 5% above uh, ideal population. And in this case, 
if, if we added 24 people to that district, then that would be in compliance. District 5, 21,715, a deviation of 870, 4.17%. When we look at the numbers, one thing I also will point out, um, <clears throat> looking at the uh, regular census count, which is not adjusted, and the adjusted, uh, the adjusted brought in 639 more people uh, that were distributed throughout the county. So when we look at this, um, you know, I've showed the growth down here uh, for 2010 and, and uh, 2020, and you can see the growth of each district. You know, 856 people, more people in, in District 1, 84 more in District 2, and you can read the next, rest of the numbers there. So the, the total growth of the county was 5,044 people of adjusted population. So um, the question becomes, you know, how, how do you want to go about this? You know, the, the minimum we could look at and, and uh, comply with, you know, our requirements is to uh, adjust uh, District 4. And I, just as an example, um, I went through and as a map person, you, you kind of like kind of smooth out the lines. Um, so let me turn on the districts here. I'll kind of show you how the software works. Um, so you can see on here that these are all the block lines. And in each, in each of those uh, polygons, you know, there's a number. And that number is, is the total population. In this case, if we wanted to move uh, people, if we wanted to enlarge the area of District 1 to get more people, I would go up here, you'll see this uh, redistricting toolbox up here. Um, this is where we do most of our work. This t there's a target district in here where you can create a new district. Uh, you can look for blocks that were not assigned to a district if you need to make sure you've got everybody counted. Uh, or you can uh, target like District 1. So in this case, when I click on District 1 and I click on uh, a tool that allows me to just do a point and click, I can click on that block. And you'll see, oh, I did the wrong district here, I went District 1, there we go. So it can reassign the district. So if you look over right here. A district three, I want district one. Okay, so if I click on this, that's not working. Yeah. Over here in this far right window is supposed to tell you uh, in District 1, um, we, we just selected, in this case, there are 82 people. Will it not allow it because of that boundary with one coming down, like rather than taking from... Mm -hmm. reboot again. <laughs> um, this uh, is not behaving properly. It's been working fine all week.
I think something while Frank's playing with this um, for you all to consider, if you don't mind, is how close um, in population do you want each district to be? The um, last time, 10 years ago, and I'm trying to go back from memory here, the committee then tried to make each district basically as equal as they could be. And um, so that's going to be kind of where we're going to need to, you all are going to think about what you think you want to do. Um, well, you know, as I said, we could, it's pretty close where it is right now. Do you want to get things closer? I guess that's going to be the question. And that's where Frank comes in to help us by clicking on different little blocks. And uh, the software will tell us how we're doing, supposedly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully. It's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, you know, the target was, was District 1. So uh, we're trying to see what happens if you move some of this area in, in the pink area, which is District 3, into District 1. So over here, on the right, you'll see numbers. And that's, uh, it, it tells you that the adjusted population, the change in, in, in these two blocks that I just added. So there were 387 people moved from one block to the other. And it'll tell you the racial, the race characteristics, the deviation. So every time I click on one, it recalculates. Now it's hard to see here. This is where in previous life, lives, you know, there, there was a gathering at the, at the bottom of the TV. So you could see what those numbers were doing. So that's the current map, am I right? The, these are the um, final. Um, adjusted numbers that we can use for. Uh, I mean, the, the map there, that's the current map. Yeah, the, the lines on there are the current districts, those larger dark lines. How did, how did they wind up with that odd shaped appendix on District 1? Do we know? Um, well, there's some, some things could have been tweaked a little sharper. Um, there's really no population down here. Those are all, the, the, you know, this is in the city park. So there's no population here. It could have gone into District 4, but they just chose to not run it up there. Now you'll see, in this case, this line going right here, this is the center of the river downtown. So on the north side of the river will be in District 1. Right, the other side is on. Okay. And the south side is District 4. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I was doing this, you know, over in the right, these are all pending changes. <clears throat> so if we decide, okay, these are the ones we want to run, then I can execute the update of the districts. And that will update this table over here which are the, the initial numbers that I provided to you. So <clears throat> I'll go ahead and, and run this. You see those numbers change a little bit. And so every time we, we go through this process, as we uh, go through these pending changes, uh, we can undo those changes, we can redo them, um, or we can do them and then go back and go back to the beginning if you want. But as you go along, you know, all these numbers are, are being recalculated uh, with every potential move that, that you want to make. Frank, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the deviation of 5%, um, where did that come from? Do you recall? I know that's been used in, you know, prior redistricting committees, but if it's a federal law or Maryland law, um, it's, it's the number we've always used, and it's, it's a, a standard. You know, it's a, uh, some jurisdictions may use a different number. Yeah. yeah. So, I've, I've, you know, there's an option here. I could have chosen 10, 20 percent or, you know, whatever. Um, but for, for Wicomico, we've always used the 5 percent. You know, ideally, you don't want to, you know, change people's boundary lines or the district that they're in unless we absolutely need to do that. 
So that I was, to you know, in previous years, um, the, the council, the com or before they had a commission, uh, there was always a, a directive to uh, move the fewest amount of people possible. So they would know who the representative is from, you know, one election to the next. Now, you know, in the, the previous exercise, you know, that was kind of thrown out the window. They, they decided they want to try to sharpen up the map. And, and you mentioned about the 50 and 13. That was where they, their, their starting point. It, there was no requirement to do that, but they thought this sounded like a logical boundary to start with. And as you uh, back out here, Eventually. So this is Route 50 going out towards, this is Pittsville area in Willards. So they, they followed it as long as they could, um, but council member lives right here and he's in district five. So they were trying to make this district three. So they carved around him to balance out. So you can see they came down here south of 50 to pick it up. And then they went north of 50 to kind of balance it out. Um, they tried to go up 13. So here's route 13 going up. Uh, and this kind of follows the city of Salisbury corporate limits. And I guess you get up here, this is, might be Conley Mill Road. Um, so at this point, you know, they also are mindful that, you know, if you can, like, don't split a town in half. So they've got, like Delmar, you know, has maintained its integrity. The same thing for uh, Pittsville and Willards. Mm -hmm. Should we try to like fix that? Because if you look at Hebron, like I know my council person is is Nicole Ackley, but the town of Hebron is in District One, which right. doesn't really make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. Well, in this case, you know, they were trying to get the population up, but also. Um, but if we look at this, I mean, she's. I mean, that district's at almost negative five. I mean, that's the closest to right. five. So I mean. So that's something if you want. Think about yeah. Think about it. Now down here, they tried to follow Route 13. This is Fruitland right here. And they didn't want to divide Fruitland in half, but they just couldn't get away from it. So they ended up, uh, in order for District 3 to have enough people, it had to jump over the west side of 13, and this is Camden Avenue, coming down, and where it makes the hard turn, comes back out to Route 13. This is the bypass here. So you can see District 4 runs out to the bypass. I guess it's Snow Hill Road, Beagle Park area. So I'll show you, um, I'm going to undo what I've done over here in this exercise. And this is going to go back into District 3. So I'm going to execute that change. So that should be the, where the numbers were when we started. So if you wanted to, and this is, you know, just showing you possibilities. Uh, this is a city park here. There's no population in, in this block, on the north side of that block. There's no population in this block. There's a stream that runs through the city park. Um, on the north side of that stream, northeast side, there's zero population. But there is population over here. Uh, this is, I think, a village in the park. So if, if we wanted to increase the population of District 4. I mean, it does 
it makes sense to pull it from three. I mean, mm -hmm. that does make the most sense. Mm -hmm. I just don't know where would be the best. So there's a block of zero, and this is 49 people here. And by, if we move those two blocks over, this is the pending changes here. Now District 4 would be 4.88%. District 3 would be 3.93%. So just by moving those two blocks, right. you know, that is in compliance with everything that, you know, you may be looking at. If, if you want to go further, then that's your decision. And the heavy gas line, that's the city boundary, right? Yes. Now, that's in there just for reference. It has no bearing on any of this. Um, especially in the city of Salisbury, the way their line runs, their corporate limits are like a spider web. Um, you know, there were... They thought, you know, is there a way to keep the city of Salisbury intact? And there really wasn't. There's a lot of population there, and they need to you know, divide that between the districts in order to balance things out. So am I hearing that you all think we should make some changes to make the adjusted population in each district more equal? Is that what you all thinking? I see one head nodding. How about everybody else? I guess my question is what, I mean, I understand that it's the 5%. Are we, how close, I mean, like 4.95 is close. That's pretty much. So do we keep it the same because it falls in that deviation, or do we try to adjust it to where that's a little bit closer to ze you know towards the zero? That's that's kind of what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. As I say, the last um, ten years ago, they tried to make it pretty equal. It didn't. I think the council had to make some changes, so it changed it a little bit. The ideal population for each district would be the twenty thousand eight hundred and forty-five which you see in that little chart over the adjusted growth at the bottom. So some of these are quite close. Some of them, like District 2's, what, are we, what have we got here? You've got it here, Frank. Um, off by 1,000 people. District 4 is off by 1,000 people. Um, 3 and 5 are 800. District 1 is only 300 difference. Well, if you want to experiment, um, we could look at like the Hebron area and see about moving some of that into District 2. District 2 is, is short by 1,000 people. They're near, near the border. So what would you do? Like what would happen if you added Hebron all the way to Route 50, well, we could, like using that boundary? Like how many different things is that? Okay. So... I'm going to go through and start. District 2 is going to be the target. Now, there's different tools I can use here. Like, I can just point and click on one, one block at a time. There's also a tool where I can just draw a line across all this. So all this got selected. Okay. So as I'm going through this process, you can see these numbers changing. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's fine. So, if we took all those, that area right there from the town of Hebron all the way to 50, um, that deviation for District 2 is 0.27%. And deviation for District 1 is 2.95%. The percent black population has gone up in District 1 to 59.78%, which is one of your goals. No, the goal is 50, so it has to be 50. No, 50 or above. 50 above. 50 above. 
So that, you know, they tried to get it to 60% if they could. They wanted to make sure that the black folks were represented. Okay, I'm confused. Okay, help me here. When you said you brought Hebron, okay, Hebron is in, was originally in District 1, correct? The town of Hebron was, yeah. Yes, and so you, by bringing it to 50, I'm not understanding what we do you took, mean by that. We took um, 50 and Hebron and put it in District 2. If you think of like where the Valero station is and like Royal Farms, you know, that kind of area, like mm -hmm. most of the Valero area, and then over from 50 into the town of Hebron, added that back to District, not back, but added it to District 2. Because going into the town of Hebron, like I live in Misty Creek, which is like right on the outskirts of the city of, of Hebron, and that's District 2. And to be, uh, to reasonably come back. Well, I was thinking because of the town of Hebron being split, that just kind of adds that. And this area is predominantly black. It's San Domingo area. Well, it, it may be predominantly well, black. But that's but, what's going to keep this number uh, up for one. But you can take that out, and District 1 is still well over 50% black. Well, how do you know? It, we haven't done that yet. Uh, I calculated it. Oh, you, you did it. it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but, you know, does anyone really believe District 1 is this little bit here, that connection of that two sections is only 900 feet. I'm going to put this over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no, it's, no, it's my fault. I'm supposed to. Uh, so the, the connection between those two sections is only 900 feet of Maryland. It runs up against Delaware. So if we, if state statute requires contiguous and reasonably compact, in my my view, District One does not meet that criteria. It doesn't look reasonably compact to me. And yes, technically under the law, I guess because of that 900 feet touch, you could call that contiguous, but, but if we were going to take from one to two, to increase two, there's about 800 people in that whole area. So, so that would add 800 people to two and take 800 people from one and still maintain 55% uh, the minority uh, population in, in one. I think it's the same it's argument. It's the same argument, whether you're splitting Sharptown or you're splitting Hebron. It's like literally the same argument. So you're pulling from one or the other. It's literally the same thing. It'd be nice if we could keep, I think, to be incorporated areas together as much as possible. Right. It just, you know, being a past council member was kind of hard. You know, we had two of us representing Fruitland. I think, so, what is it, three maybe so, representing Fruitland now. So if we can keep them together, it's so, like, Hepburn yeah. needs to stay together. Yeah. That's what and you're saying. It needs to stay in one spot. That's what, she, that's what she's suggesting. But that would be which district? I can't. This map, the map is confusing. It would stay, they would go to two. So, right now, Hebron is split between one and two. Putting Hebron together um, in two fixes that deviation issue. With her being, or the district two being at 4.95, uh, it brought it down to what when we did that? Lost it here, so. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, okay, I get, I understand what you're saying. I guess I'm also thinking about the other um, part of educating us is that not to disturb a whole lot of people. I cannot see moving Hebron out of District 1. Well, part of Hebron is out of District 1. But which part? Like, like the Misty Creek area, all on the outskirts, the whole outskirts of Hebron, down by Pemberton, or um, Crooked Oak, all of that area. Okay, you called that Hebron. Okay. Well, That's, it is uh, Hebron. Okay. I don't. <laughs> okay. I mean, by by the t you know by my address, it says Hebron. You know. Well, this is the beginning, and we can play and see what else or how the rest of the. I mean, either that or we can yeah. just leave it alone. I mean, it's at four point nine five. It meets the deviation. You know what I mean? It meets the criteria. So. I just think it'd be nice if we could get some of these, the districts closer. 
in population, closer to the 2845, right. the ideal population. It looks like District 4 is the one we really need to work on, though. Yeah. yeah the and it makes sense to pull it from 3. Is there anywhere you I could you could see a street map? Before I came here, I was trying to get like a, a really nice looking street. Mm -hmm. I've got plenty of them downstairs. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so I can run down and, and, and grab. Act them. Actually, afterwards. if you go, afterwards, yeah, I was going to say if you go to this map online through the countycouncil.org, you can enlarge it enough so that you can actually read the streets. I have yeah. done that to see what streets are where. Yeah, I tried that. I, too. Okay. I wanted to print it off. It or, yeah, or as Frank says, they have larger maps downstairs. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to leave that for the moment and see what happens, or what are the thoughts? Switch hands so you can yes. see. I, I, whatever. <laughs> um, I, I think the question here is whether we want to live up to the letter of the law or the spirit of the law. And I think that Mrs. Barkovich is attempting to live up to the spirit of the law, which I think is a very worthy objective. How we can do that without inconveniencing too many people, without putting an incumbent into another district. Those are all things that uh, our staff is obliged to work on. <laughs> so, but I, I, know, I know you have the tools, but uh, we certainly have to get some more people into District 4 to meet the letter of the law. But um, the, the 2010 data, uh, showing the current districts as they were populated in, in 2012 when this was approved, uh, show the largest deviation was 2.59%, mm. and three of them were right around a half a percent. And I think they uh, did a, a pretty good job of trying to balance out the county, uh, irregardless of who was elected or who wasn't elected or you know, whatever. Um, so, and I'm taking a basic anti-gerrymandering position uh, because I don't think that's what we're here for. And I don't think anybody is trying to do that. But that's why I think ideally we should try to get to that, you know, within at least 2% or 2.5%. So this would be a start. We... And no, now, can you, how do you say those changes so we know what we've done? Well, we know what it was when we started from okay. this chart. So as we go through, um, you know, we can uh, modify the map. And then if we find something, we get close, then we can save that map. Um, it's, it's not easy to start again. I have to, have to rebuild another map from scratch to, to do this again. Okay. So, you know, we can fill around with it tonight, um, take a look at the numbers, and see if you want to work some more on it. If, if you like, you know, ultimately, you know, we'll prepare a map for the council that'll show the districts that are being moved. And so, and we'll tell them how many people are in, you know, in these blocks are going from this district to that district, you know, and what the composition of those blocks are. And, you know, while you're looking at that map, I'm just curious. Do You were here the last time. Can you tell me why District 1 came here? What was that purpose? I'm sure it had to have some purpose. Well, I, I just think it, it got by them. <laughs> I think if it had been included in the other district, If it, it, could, it could have easily gone into District 4. Mm -hmm. There's no population there. You know, it's just, it makes the map uh, not pretty by having a, this little appendage running down there. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do that right now, we can take, put that into District 4. Mm -hmm. I know, that, my OCD is like, fix that right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. There, right? right. Yeah, fix that. Yeah, let, yeah, let's do that. 
<laughs> not going to change the numbers, though. Cause no. Because there's, there's nothing in. there. What is it? Uh, right, the city what, park is what he's saying. Is the that's park. the city park. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. So well, we never mind. We don't have to worry about development. Oh, well. Being, uh, <laughs> yeah. Skewing the population. So there's two blocks here. There's city park. There's no population. Okay. Oh, then okay. Um, on East Main Street, you know where that Royal Granite is? Mm -hmm. So between East Main Street and the river, mm -hmm. um, it's all commercial office mm -hmm. stuff. There's a zero population there, so we can add that into here, and it kind of smooths out that line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and run that. So now that's been added into District 4. And if I change this, you'll see. See, that looks prettier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the goals too, right? Yes, right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. I love pretty maps. Yeah. Pretty down. <laughs> okay, so traveling on down that same avenue, if we go further down here, down the park area, I'm going to go back with a target of District 4 and take some of this pink area. There's zero population here in the park, and then here's village in the park. And this would kind of balance out, smooth out that line. Mm -hmm. And there's this a little triangle there. Um, you know where Parkwood Apartments is? There's a little triangle in the road. Um, there's no population there. So this is moving 49 people from District 3 to District 4. So I'll go ahead yeah. and run that. So it's, there's a little anomaly there. Let's get rid of that. So to see what that looks like, when you back out. Adam Chick Madam Chair, can I ask a I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking. Um, I'm not quite sure how the process works. Does, do we have to vote on each change as we change these districts? And how, how does this process work? Are we doing that and all vote and say, yes, I agree with that change? Or Well, I know we have to vote on the final map before we okay. send it to the council. Right. But I think maybe right now we can do this as consensus. If you all like what you... So what Frank was sort of saying earlier is every time you make a change or want to create a new map, he has to create a new map. <clears throat> if everybody just likes that park creation, you could vote on that now, and then Frank has that as a starting template. And if each time you agree on something, because every time he makes these next changes, so if the next set of changes is the village in the park, then you could all vote on that. And then you get to see the new numbers, and then you can make any additional changes. And versus if you just sort of play around with it and then say you haven't made any votes, then at the end of the day, you're really nowhere. You've just seen a bunch of hypotheticals. And whether it's easier to look at a bunch of hypotheticals, think about them, and then come back and try to make changes at the next meeting and institute them, that's your decision how you want to go, I, I, I imagine Mr. McKinsey will appreciate any, Definitely. the easier it makes it for him, I imagine not that he's not diligent in his job, but it would probably be easier with the way we've seen the software act tonight. So are you saying we should have a motion and a second to make these changes or just a consensus? How would that work? You can have them. When you I'm say fine vote. with either. I don't think there needs to be an answer. Uh, like, additionally, you may make a change, and later you want to come back and vote to undo the change. I think a consensus is a little bit easier to manipulate along the way. But for the hard and fast ones, if you like the park one, for example, the the first manipulation. That was just a uh, decorum to make the lines cleaner. That one could be more of a firm vote. Okay. But with this next one, where we see that at minimum it brings four into legal compliance, you might just say, we like that, but let's see what else there is to do. Or you may say, 
now that we're legally compliant, now let's just sort of look at what else we can touch up because God forbid Corona explodes and you have to go to a meeting in Zoom or it becomes more difficult. You still have this hard timeline at the end of the day to get this voted by December. Mm -hmm. So that's a consideration as well in everything. And so at this point, you're now legally compliant in every way, shape or form. And it might be a decision to vote at that, this time now. And now, after you're legally compliant, look at anything else that you may feel like expanding Hebron or growing for even more uh, with your, all of your other goals that you've set in mind. Okay. So if that's guidance. I'm okay. Trying. Do you all want to make it an official vote or do you want to just do this by consensus at the moment? I think we're all in consensus with the park, the park area, you okay. know. And how about the village in the park? I think that's what that's called. Adding that to or just vote on the park part? The whole thing? I know this sounds silly, but I would prefer a vote because then I feel like we're actually accomplishing and moving that's, forward. That's what I'm asking you. What Somebody's going to I'm, need to make a motion. Okay. So that's why I'm kind of okay. throwing out some possibilities. Do we just do the park? Do we do the whole thing? Do we do it in two separate motions? Um, Frank, do you have to be. zoom in a, a little closer again? I just. So in this. Uh, and uh, whether we made those changes, zoom into that area again. Okay. So these areas right here, from these yellow blocks right here down to here, were in District 1. And the, the and new edge uh, of the uh, District 4 that you added, that's Beglin Park Road? Over here is Beglin right. Park. Right, okay, all right. So this is part of the park, and then this is... North Park and South yeah. Park. And it's what, Village in the Park, I think? I think it's called it Village in the Park. There's 49 people in there. Okay. Do I have a motion to... Accept those? To, to accept those? I move that we accept all of these changes. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. No, but I would like to point out that we can undo those changes at any time up until our final, our final vote. Correct, sir? Correct. Yes. So, Frank, you have one? And that is exactly how it worked last time. You know, they try some over here. Well, we can let's try over here a little bit. I like it's better, and that's kind of how it worked out. But this is going to be your new base going forward, correct? As you make the additional make changes. changes, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, what do we do about the Hebron issue? Do we go back to that? Because that is now in District Two, mm -hmm. and I don't know what that did with the numbers. Some's in two, and some is in one. I mean, it was. But from I mean, what we saw it, adding Hebron to District 2 uh, accomplished quite a few things. It kept Hebron together. It helped to get closer to the zero mark, and it upped the minority district to 59%. So I, I feel okay, like I guess that's what I'm not understanding. How did it up the minority district? Because pop white population there's a white Hebron. population in Hebron. Right. So taking taking the white population from District One made the black population go up percentage wise. Okay, percentage, yes. Percentage wise, not the right. amount of people in general, yeah. but percentage. I still want to see streets. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I know we can vote, but I'm not. It is 100 percent with that area. Um, I agree with you. I'm concerned that one, though contiguous, cannot be considered. Get closer to the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm concerned that one, though contiguous, is not reasonably compact, and moving Hebron into two makes that situation even worse. Okay, so we'll just leave that alone for now, Frank. Can we just leave that like that for the moment, or what well, do we have to do? I'll give you the numbers. Wait, that, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, and as I'm going through this, you know, there's opportunities for error. So as we do this, you know, I may go through it after I review it 
over the next few days and may find that I, I hit the wrong button somewhere. So I'll, I'll continue to reevaluate, recheck these things to make sure that you know, we're still compact to what we're trying to do. So in this case, um, District 2, if we put all this area right in here, take that out of District 1 and put it in 2, 2 is now 0.27% uh, deviation. One is still 2.95% deviation, and it has an, an adjusted black population of 59.78%. So that, so that got you closer to your yeah, ideal. Yeah, so, so here's my question. What is more important, for it to us to be closer with the numbers or for it to be compact? Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, like, you have to consider them all, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if one kind of outranked the other or, you know, in an well, order of isn't, importance. Isn't contiguous and reasonably compact a matter of state statute? No. It's in our charter. And I didn't it's in the charter. But, it's I mean, charter. But what do you, you're, the defi there's not like a definition. You, what you have is compliant. Okay. Okay. So what the current. What you currently have is legally compliant in that 900 feet, that's legally compliant. So whether this committee feels that that adequately meets all the other factors and is a representation is to decide, but as it sits, it is legal. Nobody, it's not been challenged as illegal. So it's not like you're trying to correct an illegal an irregularity or an illegality, uh, I get it's just a preference, as you said earlier, with the park area. You know, being compact, is, it's a form of art. So yes, yeah. it's going to look to you a certain way, and well, it, it could be a little sharper well, well, here. But. Zoom out now, Frank, because now look at, at District 1. It, it, it becomes a thin line diagonal across the county. We'll say that historically, this is San Domingo. There's a large uh, black population in this area, and they've always strived to keep this in District 1. But this is your, and as your you ballgame. And as you move down, I mean, it just looks like you just <coughs> chopped up. I mean, I'm, it just, I don't know. I just need to see the streets. I'm just, mm -mm. Uh, Can I ask what? <laughs> What is uh, the uh, the dividing line in that 900 feet there between the corner of Delaware and you know there? Is that a road? This is a road here. I think it's Route 54. It's hold on, I can tell you. It's uh, oh, or 313, 54. Probably. Yeah, it's Route 54. Yeah, that's because that's the where dividing I, line between right, that's two where I and live. one. <laughs> so, yeah, and I know that area. Delaware is the dividing line on the other side, and it's there's just 900 feet between where 54 junctions with um, what's that route number? Right. I mean, you can walk across the street and you're in Delaware. Right. So you have 54 nine, 900 feet to whatever this route number is. I drew a line through it. Is it 400? What's this, um, what's this root number right right here, Frank? Is this, number is this is? old railroad? No, it's a street. It's a street. It said I mean, it's old railroad is a road. Okay, it's all right. A street. Okay. Yeah, that one, that's the one coming yeah, off so of there's only, there's only 900 feet there, right? Right, right in that area, 900 feet of Route 54. Right. And it just... And you Right, you're going to go be in Delaware. But that has nothing to do with Hebron, though. I mean, that 900 feet, I mean, it's not like it pulled from that. I yeah, mean, but, it, like, but, that was still like that on the original map. It, it was. But the, the thing about District 1 is that now it's becoming this long snake. And though, yes, it does meet the letter of the law and being contiguous, it's... My issue is, what do the people up here in the northwest corner have to do, have in common with the people in the center of town? Because the issues tend to be 
urban versus rural. You know, in, in the city of Salisbury, we have our own police, we have our own fire. And, and so the people in the center, they're in the bottom part are one, they face the same issues that I do and, 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 and four. Our, our, we have a commonality of, of issues because the services that the county provides are local. They're not liberal, they're not conservative, uh, they're not black, they're not white, they're about streets, police, fire. So my issue would be what do the people up in that northwest corner of the county have in common with the people in the center? Yeah, but you could argue that with every single one. What do these people in the town of Fruitland have to do with the people all the way down in Westover? Uh, well, they don't. Right, so I mean, I mean, we, we, we could argue about every district well, then. We, we I could. Mean, with that same but, argument. But the, but the issue is, is that you know, if you look at the map of the county, see those two lines? 67% of the population of this county li lives between those two lines. Yet the 33% outside those lines has three districts and the people where 67% of the population lives has two. So but if you do it within, I mean, that's, but that's where the most dense population is in the city of Salisbury, right. um, which is and four. It's, it's it is a lot of it is in district one. So their areas will be smaller because they have a higher population. Their land area will be smaller. There, there, are, there are only two districts in this county uh, that are primarily urban suburban, one and four. There are three districts, two, five, and three, which are predominantly rural. Mm -hmm. The rural population of the county is only 30% of the population of the county. And the urban, urban suburban population of the county is is 65 percent of the okay. county. Okay. So the people who live in 65 65 percent of the population live in an area that have two districts, and people who live 33 percent of the population that live in rural areas have three. But that's because but, of the numbers. Like yeah, the, the that's because of the numbers. For numbers, yeah. so that means each one has 20,000 people. Like, so 20,000 people they're equal, two the, is going to be a larger area. Yeah, two, three, and five, you're right, they are more rural, but because they have a lot of farm area, homes are spread out, um, you know, it's, it's, believe me, I can tell you, it's a ways to drive from Fruitland to Willards for District 3 when I did that. It's nice to have something that is compact, like District 1 or District 4, if you're, you know, campaigning. And I'm not arguing that we change <laughs> all of this, I'm not arguing that. What I'm just saying is that, that District 1 has this part up in the northwest corner that's primarily rural and meets the letter of the law of being contiguous, but, but it's, it's an odd shape. It just, it just looks odd to me and it, it looks, you know, I come from Massachusetts. We invented the word gerrymander. It looks gerrymandered to me. Well, you know, well, because it, 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 it was. <laughs> they did it a few years. I mean, it's been a, a long time ago, but that's why it looks that way. Because they, I mean, to be very honest, because they wanted to keep that Central Republican Committee person in a Republican district. So up there, because I live there, and that's why I know. That's what they did, and it would have been years ago. But up there where San Domingo is, you know, really, it should, District 1 should have come over. It should have come over. And they, they didn't, because, it, no. I mean, I'm just saying. Coming over where? Where, where are you pointing out? You mean okay, I need to coming over more to Route 50, is that what you're saying? No, coming towards uh, Shark Tail. Uh, okay. Yeah, but then you're taking from two, and two's already right, low. Right, yeah. right. No, I'm not saying doing that now. Yeah, I'm saying before. that's what they did, yeah. and that's why it looks that way at the top. I honestly think the San Domingo area was kept in there to make sure that the minority population stayed the minority. 100%, that's why they did it. I know it doesn't look pretty, but that's why it was done, to keep the minority district a minority district. And I think that you need that area in order to keep that. Yeah, you, you do, you do, yeah. because Sharp Town is definitely not. I mean, not Sharp Town, just that area. That's in it. That, San Domingo. San Domingo is next to Sharp Town. Right, right. I mean, that, and that's why it is. So it's no need to bring it, bring it over. I mean, right. But the the area was not Sharp Town, but it was Mardella. Oh, down yep. here. It was Mardella, that you know. Here's Mardella, right here. But, but San Domingo. 
San Domingo is, my address is Mardella Springs. Okay. <laughs> it's a mess, yeah. is what it is. Uh, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> but that's the way, but like you're saying, the reason, that's the way that map looks the way it does. Mm -hmm. As an exercise, you know, I could undo the change we did for Hebron and move this area up here into District 2 to see what the numbers do, just to take a look. So I'm going to put this back into, I'm going to back into one. It's all part of the deal. Yeah. I guess that's why I need a street because the road that I'm thinking of is like North Tully Road. That they sliced, that was sliced up. So now we're going to take this out of one and put it in two. So the target's going to be two. Want to watch on this is the minority right, right. numbers. Yes. Okay. A break. Spinning, spinning. The county needs to upgrade its wire. <laughs> this is hardwired in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so. Okay, so. You're still going all the way down in that corner, right? At that, at that point, yeah, I'm still going down. Um, right now, District 1 is 75 people below deviation, and District 2 is 595 below. So let's keep moving down. One is a 58% black there. And our deviation is getting good. How far down are you thinking to go to 54? I was going down to 54. And so look at these numbers now. Um, the, the deviation for District 2 is negative 2.34%. Uh, District 1 is negative 0.88%. The adjusted black population is 58.66%. The same thing, pretty okay. much. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both changes achieve the same thing.
So uh, where is the incorporated area of Mardella there? Right here. Uh, that's what I thought. Okay. So you've got the, the side of Mardella that has the schools is now in one. No. That's no. in two. It's, it's in two. 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 Okay. Two. No, I mean would be changed to one. Is that what you changed? No. No, he's taking he's taking this. Oh there up there. And okay. Yes. Two. So schools of Mardella are are they right in here? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're uh, on whatever that would be, the north side of 54 there. 313 and 54. Yeah. yeah. There's a school there, and there's no school back here. So now it's a, a matter of, you know, this is, if we move that over, it's, you're getting more compact with your district one. Your numbers look okay. Still in compliance. You said it's 58% at that? 58.06. 58.06 as opposed to... Is it now? It was 57. It was 57. So it goes up. Mm -hmm. So it's more minority. But well, that was because, then where did you put, you took for, and added it to District 2? Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that whole northwest corner of one, the, this whole section, that whole northwest corner. The minority number higher. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Historically, that's not been the case. Because <laughs> when we did it before, you know, we, we looked at that and you couldn't do it. I noticed that there had been a shift in, in the makeup of the demographics. Much more so than the old. Is there a way to tell how many people that affects? 544 people. For that area and because it's rural, that is, that's going to affect them a lot, if you know what I mean, because they are rural. You can move closer to the mic. Oh. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, no, what I was saying was because they are rural, they, uh, even though it's only 500 and some people, it would that would affect them affect them a lot because it is a rural area. If I'm looking at the map correctly. <laughs> That's the other piece. <laughs> If you want to take a little break, I can run downstairs and get a couple of paper maps with street names on it. Okay. okay well, we. How long did you want to? We were going to try to go to eight o'clock and stop at eight o'clock. We still have to talk about future meeting schedules. Um, so we'll need a few minutes for that. Okay. Well, or after the meeting, can I just? You or you're not going to give them to me. I can just look at them, right? I'll give you whatever you want. <laughs> I'll put them out fresh for you. Just a, a question on that, that last move up in the northwest. Did that move San Domingo from one to two? Is that what you did? Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. that's what I thought. Now, it ha it's not been executed yet. It, oh, I understand that. changes. Well, my, my understanding from knowing people over these last 40 years I've been here is that San Domingo is historically an important area or neighborhood of the black community. 
and it might be something that um, we should consider, or maybe that's what the previous council uh, can, would consider, but I would uh, certainly de defer to Ms. Kennedy, who actually lives out there. Yeah, I mean, you're, what you just said is absolutely right. I couldn't, I could, you're, what you're saying is absolutely correct. I couldn't say it any better, yeah. I'll bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, I've known a lot of people lived out there and worked yeah. with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, and the reason, right, right, of course, every area changes, and that's why the numbers are decreasing, and that's why the percentage didn't really make a difference, because it's just, just the way, you know, the area is going. Young people go to school, graduate, go away, don't come back, you know, like every other area, so. I have some of them. You got some of them? I have some of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is a lot of people to move, though. Mm -hmm. 544. It is, it is uh, a lot. I, I am pleased that we didn't do anything by moving more black people into one, trying to, not deliberately, but pack all of the minorities into one district where they wouldn't have any influence on any other district. That exactly. would be something to avoid also. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to undo the change up there? I would. Yes. <laughs> I, I think I expressed I my opinion on Ben yes. Domingo. Yes, I would. Me too. Um, you know I, I, I would suggest that to, if we're moving things along that uh, and I will move, if you permit, that uh, the commission uh, request, not direct, request uh, that staff try to come up with some hypotheticals which would get us closer uh, to, say, the 2% deviation while maintaining, and this is a, not easy, it's easier with that than paper, <laughs> but, uh, to uh, try to get to, say, closer to 2% uh, the way the last council did it, while certainly maintaining the minority district, not moving too many people, and not uh, moving any incumbent uh, council members or board of ed members out of their district, because if we want them out, we should vote them out. <laughs> Frank, do you think you can? Uh, you're asking me to come up with some different scenarios? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Before and I know it won't be easy, but, you know, I've participated in redistricting 20 schools where people really cared. <laughs> yeah, people, people do. They can get very um, upset over where they are placed mm -hmm. as far as council represent yeah, rep they do. representatives. No, not as much as whether they're going to Fruitland or Pinehurst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you want Frank to work on this maybe between now and next time? Did somebody second that? Oh, is that a motion? Okay. Are all those in favor? Aye. Motion? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Anybody opposed? Okay, Frank. Got my marching orders. You got your marching orders. All right, then do you want to stop the map playing for tonight then? You've all had enough. It does get very confusing. Mm -hmm. All right, well then the last thing on the list, which was not on your agenda, but now that we have the numbers to work with, we need to figure out a meeting schedule uh, since we can actually do work on this. And I sent Laura some dates um, and she's come back. And Laura, you may have to help me with this to make sure I get it right from your email. But I was thinking that we would meet like every two weeks um, on a Wednesday at six o'clock like we've been doing. The only problem is she told me the first Wednesday of each month, the election board meets in these chambers. Electrical. Electrical board, sorry. Electrical <laughs> board, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Electrical board meets in these chambers. So that means that was out. So the next meeting two weeks from tonight would be the 22nd of September, and that would give us time to let Frank work with the map. Is that okay? Um, what if we pushed it back to the following week, the 29th, and then do every two weeks from there? That would give Frank an extra week to work 
get some numbers. Twenty second. Yeah, I, I, I have a delegate um, yeah. coming to speak. Um, I wouldn't even be able to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of town on the 29th, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I'm going to be out of I, town on the 29th also. Two but weeks, I and then I can take away from the first <laughs> Wednesday. Well, Laura will not be here on the 13th, am I correct? So that's a date we... Okay. And I'd like to try and wrap this up. You know, before Thanksgiving, basically, yeah, absolutely. I want it done before Thanksgiving. Is there an? What if we do a Thursday night instead of a Wednesday night? I don't know, Laura. What? Th um, Thursday nights, um, the first and third Thursday, I have charter review committee. So the board of zoning appeals. And the fourth is the board of zoning appeals. So Thursdays are not good. Okay. Tuesday is council day, so that is not good. I don't think anybody wants to do a Friday. Um, I don't know what Mondays City Council what day do they meet? They meet on Monday evening. Yeah, City Council meets Monday evenings. So I think we're going to kind of have to be stuck with the Wednesday maybe. So I'm what do you all think? I mean we can't do the 6th because of the electrical board meeting That's in October. October. <coughs> yeah, in October, and I'd like to have another meeting in September what, uh, so we can move forward with this. Excuse me, what, what time are those people meeting? Oh, the electrical, the electrical board? Yeah. Um, they meet at... S Andrew, do you know off the top of your head? They meet the first of the... What time though? What time? Um, I'm it's at five o'clock. I think they're five to seven. Five o'clock or something. Yeah, they're five o'clock. Yeah. And they go till until they're done. Until they're, there was about an hour and a half the last month. Yeah. Almost two. Yeah, hours. it'd be too late to follow them. And we have people who do work during the day, so we need to keep this probably in the evenings for everybody to, or the majority of people to attend. 22nd, what time are you meeting with the delegate? Um, we have a big event at Evo with him. Um, Chris Adams is coming at 6.30. That's a 6.30? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's possible to meet at 4 if everyone's schedule will allow. That'll give you a couple hours before. What is that? The 22nd. 22nd. Second. I mean, I can do that. I don't know about anybody else. 4 to 6. I could possibly do that after, yeah. I'd rather do that than the 29th, so. I thought we didn't have to move the time on the 22nd. It was, we're talking about the 6th. No, the 22nd, we, the 22nd we have some people who cannot be here. We have some people who can't be here on the 29th, so we were trying to come up with a compromise on a date for September, and then October... Do you have somebody else who can be here on the 13th with us, or does it have I to be you? Lynn. Yeah, I could check with Lynn to see if she can. So maybe we could meet that night. The 13th? So of October, I'm looking at. Oh, October, okay. Yeah. So you want to do the 22nd, but do it at 4? Oh, that's what Laura is suggesting, from 4 to 6. Should we just give it? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. all right. Um, yep. 12th, um, my wife has surgery. So I don't know what I will be doing for that week anyway. Okay. That's the, she has on the 12th. Of October? Yes. So no, you okay. might not be here the 13th either. Be the 13th. Which, okay. All right. So All the right. 13th is not good. Okay. That's not going to work. Then we're looking at October 20th. That's fine. Okay. And that would be 6 o'clock. Can we go back to 6, Laura? What do you... Six o'clock? You said October 20th? Yes. Um, we can do it at six o'clock, yes. Okay, why don't we put six for that? And then it's getting tight. We cannot meet November 3rd. It would have to be the 10th. And that's putting us almost to Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving's the 25th. What's wrong with November 3rd? The electrical board meets here. Oh. 
tenth is fine. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, we should try to have this wrapped up by the tenth. I would. Three meetings. I right? would like to think maybe we can. Okay. And if Frank's able to work on this in I think between. We do a couple of scenarios okay. by the next meeting. By the next meeting. Okay, let's do that. And hopefully that will be okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, Gail, would you, would you mind repeating this for the benefit of my finger? Okay. Um, we have September 22nd at 4 p.m. Okay. We have October 20th at 6 p.m. And then we have November 10th at 6 p.m. Well, I mean, we have technically um, to go into December. We can. What did Anthony say? Beginning of December, end of December? Well, as soon as possible, because still council needs to do what they have to do. We have to have a public hearing and have our work session and then vote. Okay. And, and advertise and all that. Yeah, they have to advertise, what, two weeks before a public hearing? I don't recall. I have to look that up. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's possible, maybe I'm being excessively hopeful, that we could have enough work done or Mr. McKenzie could have enough work done by the end of October that we might have just a couple of weekly weekly meetings and finish up. We could squeeze in an extra. There's no law that says we have to wait two weeks. It depends on how much work we're getting done. And uh, I'm going to vote for being done with this by Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would. Well, I, that's. I would like to have it done by Thanksgiving. Absolutely. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remind everyone we're actually mind everyone we're actually already in compliance by the few changes we already made <laughs> well we we did request that the staff try to get us into better no, no, ideal no. compliance i think we are compliant no. if we accept this but i don't really care to bring to the council a plan that says uh, we're borderline in compliance I, oh, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I would like to see us get closer in all the districts. Yeah. Well, there was discussion of the 544 people. You know, there'll be a, if we start balancing out, there'll be a couple thousand people that will be moved. I understand that. And we may decide that. Yeah, it's time not to. We, we, we don't do it rather than aggravate untold thousands of voters, none of whom would be voting for me because I can't run for anything. <laughs> Great thing about being on this board. <laughs> and I'm not running again for anything either, so we're set. I'll also bring some paper maps and I'll figure out a better way to show street names on this map, but the resolution is just... It's so small. It's so small. Yeah, yeah it's too well, small. I don't know about the rest of you, but I get some glare from the fluorescence. Mm -hmm. And of course, I couldn't see it all when I was sitting down, down there last last meeting. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion for tonight, or can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, everybody.